Gibraltar. Gateway to the Mediterranean. Sitting resolute at the southern tip of the Iberian Peninsula as one of the pillars of Hercules. It is home to a diverse wildlife in its waters and on its land. This is a wild Gibraltar. Gibraltar sits along a major migratory bottleneck for birds of prey and other soaring birds, such as storks. At a mere 14 kilometers across to the African continent at its narrowest point, it is the shortest crossing in Western Europe for any migrating birds, especially those that find it hard to sustain flight over long sea crossings, such as birds of prey that rely on thermals with which to soar and gain height. Birds such as black kites, short-toed eagles, and griffin vultures, to name but a few, Gibraltar is hugely important in wildlife terms, in, in what is known as biodiversity terms. Um, we're in Europe, but we're almost in Africa. And uh, we're in the Mediterranean, but we're almost in the Atlantic. So we have um, influences from, from a range of geographical regions. We're also part of a, a mountain range, uh, referred to some as the Gibraltar Arc, which takes in the uh, Betic uh, Mountains of southern Spain and the Rift Mountains in Morocco. Um, they are known as a biodiversity hotspot within the Mediterranean, and the Mediterranean is considered a biodiversity hotspot globally. Um, Gibraltar is made of limestone. It's got a, a, a large variety of habitats. Um, limestone mountains are renowned for, for the diversity of their floras, for example. Um, diverse floras uh, um, promote uh, a diverse insect communities and uh, insects attract birds and so forth. Other than that, Gibraltar is of course a, uh, a wonderful place in which to view migration. Um, it's extremely important and world-renowned for bird migration because um, it's the, the Strait of Gibraltar is the narrowest crossing uh, from Europe to Africa uh, anywhere in, in uh, Western Europe. So. So um, many of the, the birds, the migratory birds from Western Europe, uh, certainly most of the, the soaring birds, the raptors and storks, congregate at the Strait of Gibraltar twice a year um, in order to travel from Europe to Africa and vice versa. Less well known but equally important is uh, migration of, of seabirds, uh, and marine life, fish, cetaceans, in and out of the Mediterranean that can be viewed from Gibraltar as well. So for a whole variety of reasons, not least that Gibraltar has species, for example, of plants that grow nowhere else, Gibraltar is, I would say, extremely important in biodiversity terms. So what is a bird of prey? Mm, what is a bird of prey? Uh, without being scientific, I would say that a bird of prey is a creature of immense grace and beauty that has captured the, uh, the imagination of man since, since the dawn of time. I suppose, broadly speaking, uh, uh, the term refers to any bird that, uh, that, that eats, uh, well, mostly birds that eat vertebrate prey, so, so reptiles, amphibians, birds and mammals. Um, so we have eagles, buzzards, falcons, owls as well can be considered birds of prey. Um, of course, within that grouping are also some birds that are um, closely related to these birds, but, uh, but perhaps don't eat the, the, the types of prey that we associate with birds of prey. So, for example, smaller falcons, such as the lesser kestrel in Gibraltar, um, tend to feed um, uh, almost entirely on insect prey. And in that sense, even though they, they, uh, they eat larger insects, well, 
what makes them birds of prey and not insectivorous birds. It's, a, it, it's, it's difficult to judge. And um, honey buzzards, for example, a, large, a, a much larger species, which uh, migrates past Gibraltar in its thousands, even though that's roughly the size of one of our own yellow-legged gulls, they feed almost exclusively on the tiny larvae of wasps. The Gibraltar Ornithological and Natural History Society Raptor Unit makes it a point to study, breed and care for many species of bird of prey. Uh, we cater for every species that can be found on migration really apart from the birds that are found locally, ranging from, say, large griffin vultures right down to little scops owls and little owls. So the range is quite vast, really. They carry out surveys of birds of prey breeding in Gibraltar, care for injured birds and breed endangered species. In terms of numbers, I can tell you that since we've started, we've released nearly, nearly a thousand birds now. The MOD as a whole works quite closely here in Gibraltar with GONS and supports the aviary work and you know, obviously we provide the, the site for the aviary because we want to be able to provide a safe, secure place for that. However, in addition to that, as an organisation, we, provide, we manage our estate to, you know, to ensure that it's a safe and sustainable habitat, not just for the wildlife but also for military training because they go hand in hand together and therefore we always try and work closely together with those partners to ensure that projects like the Avery work can go ahead and can provide that, that safe haven for the wildlife. The conservation of these birds is an important task and to help facilitate this an extensive program of breed and release is undertaken at the aviary. Some of the birds being bred include peregrine falcons, lesser kestrels and goshawks. The first two breed in Gibraltar whilst the latter is useful because it is an excellent foster parent. We'll be keeping an eye on the last two in particular. This is Coco. She is a seven-year-old goshawk in breeding season. The goshawk is a member of the hawk and eagle family. It is a raptor. It has short, broad wings and a long tail. Both are adaptations to maneuvering through trees in the forests that it lives and nests in, including those in nearby southern Spain and northern Morocco. Stanley Olivero, one of the individuals that helps maintain the aviary, is preparing to perform artificial insemination. Shikoba is a five-year-old male goshawk, and due to the overwhelming urge to mate that males exhibit during this period, Stanley is unable to expose any part of his body other than his hand, which is kitted in a special collection glove. Stanley then proceeds to finish the procedure by injecting the semen into the female goshawk. Coco is then checked to ascertain how many eggs she is carrying. The lesser kestrel, or Falco nomani in Latin, is a small falcon. This species breeds from the Mediterranean across South Central Asia to China and Mongolia. Although it often breeds in association with humans and frequently forms colonies within towns, it is nevertheless declining globally and is a species of conservation concern. Gibraltar still holds a colony on the north face of the rock, but this is small. It currently holds some 10 to 15 pairs, compared to the many dozens of pairs that bred here at the beginning of the 20th century. The lesser castle breeding program was started several years back because of the decline of the lesser castles colony on the north face in, in uh, Gibraltar. We noticed that there was a marked decline since uh, after the war towards our times. I mean, I've got friends in, in Catalan Bay, for example, Mr. Mr. Baglietto, that he remembers in the 1940s, being a young, a young boy and going to watch lesser castles, and he says that there were hundreds of them. And on a last survey that I did uh, uh, this spring, we noticed that there were just five pairs left. So we decided 
that we will not uh, lose the lesser castle. We will try to do something about it. So we got several pairs of lesser castles in captivity, which came to us through rehabilitation. Uh, birds that are unable to be returned back into the wild in most cases. And with those birds, we've bred them, managed to breed them in captivity. I mean, we were uh, the second center to breed them in the Iberian Peninsula. So, I mean, that's quite a feat, I think. And we've, we bred last year, we bred seven. And we've managed to release them back into the wild. Now, lesser castles are migratory species. And they winter most of them in Western Africa. That means that when we release them here, they fly, they migrate to Western Africa, and then hopefully they will come back to, in, to, to Gibraltar, either in this area here, or they will be absorbed by the larger colony of the North Face. Uh, if they, which, whichever way is, fi is, is fine for us. And we are going to install nest boxes all around this area to see if we can have a second colony. This group of lesser kestrel chicks is two days old, with a second group still in the incubator. Their parents are birds that were found injured and cannot be released back into the wild. Vincent prepares a blended mixture of various prey to feed to them. I mean, the process of, uh, of reintroducing back into the wild is quite simple, really, but you've got to have the uh, know-hows. What we do is that we remove the chicks from the parents when they're 14 days old. Um, and we place them in what we call a hacking box. A hacking box is an artificial nest that can be placed anywhere, obviously, out of reach of predators. And there they, they are fed through the box, through the back of the box, so that there's no human food contact. Then, as they, de they develop, they will start to fly around the area, hunt, and hope, and hopefully, as they did, migrate. Coco has laid four eggs after a period of 30 to 35 days. Up to five eggs are laid, with one or two days between each, generally starting in late April. Incubation properly starts after the last egg has been laid. Incubation is only done by the female and lasts for around five weeks. After the incubation period, only two chicks hatch. Sadly, two did not make it. The young all hatch at around the same time. Once hatched, the female will vigorously defend the chicks. They have been known to attack humans. The surviving pair have been named Bonnie and Clyde. Um, once the chicks are hatched, um, obviously you've got to look that they've hatched correctly because sometimes we get problems with eggs not, uh, not hatching. So basically what you've got to do during that stage is a lot of monitoring. Once you see that the chicks have already hatched and are with their parents, then it's straightforward. Unless, for example, one of the parents is not feeding the, 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 the chicks correctly, then obviously you've got to bring that chick out, feed it for a couple of days and then, and then put it back. Um, with chicks that are born in incubators, the, the same. You've got to have uh, the, the, the incubator set at a certain temperature to make sure that the eggs are going to hatch correctly. If, if there's any uh, pr uh, problems, then obviously you've got to interfere. That means getting the, uh, a hatching egg and removing some of the, uh, the, the actual eggshell to make the, the, the hole larger so that the chick can actually break through the shell. So it involves a lot of monitoring, really.